now how to edit the image that we have and to be able to create surfaces or textures where we're editing the image more directly and to do that we're going to use the magic wand tool so we're going to go back to our original image so let's just select this and rename it so we can find that later so we'll call this elevation And when we're on this elevation, we're going to go to our magic wand. Now, a lot of these tools in Photoshop have multiple tools hidden in them. So if you hold left click down, you'll see that there's a variety. So there's quick selection tool and magic wand. So if it doesn't show you the magic wand straight away, uh, you can hold it down and that will take you to the magic wand option. Once you're in the particular option or preference that you generally use, it tends to stay there. Uh, so your setup might look different to mine. I'm probably also using an older version of Photoshop than you might be. All right, now what, what am I doing? I'm wanting to click on the area that is the, the timber, the hardwood deck. So I'm gonna click on this area and what it's defining is an area based on the tolerance. So that's 100, so it's choosing more than it could if I had that at zero. So if I do that again, it's going to define less of an area and it's defining it within pixels, within, in this case, within the black lines. What if I don't want to do that? What if I want to select everything that is brown, even if I have it at 100% tolerance, it's still not going to select everything that's brown. It's still being defined by the black lines. However, if I select something like that and then go select similar, that's going to choose everything. But as we can see, it's choosing far too much because the tolerance is so high. So let's reduce that down to, let's say 20, and then go select similar. And we see now it's reduced its selections just down to the areas that are actually that brown. Now there might be some here that I wanted to change as well and it hasn't, uh, but generally it now has. What I can do is create a new layer, or I could also copy paste that. If I do want to select any more area than has been selected, I could also hold shift and then use the marquee tool to increase my area selection. So now I've got all of the area in question and I'm going to go layer, new layer, and I'll call this decking. And while I've got it selected, I'll just choose maybe a brown. Now I could just go layer, layer by copy. Um, we'll make it red just so it stands out. And I'm going to use, not my paint bucket this time, I'll use my pen tool, but I'll just make it really big. Opacity 100, flow 100, and I'm going to color in all of the areas that I've selected. I'm using red just so you can see that it's different. So I'll color that in. Now the point is I'm doing this on a different layer, so I'm not affecting, just um, Control D or Command D to deselect. I'm not replacing the elevation, it's still there. I'm just replicating it. Now I'm sort of doing this more steps than are necessary. I'm just trying to explain the process to you. And then what we're going to do is to bring in a decking that looks the way that we want it to. We'll use this one here, we could use this one here, it's a bit bigger. We can bring this in. Let's drag, drop into Photoshop. Rotate it, we want this to be in a horizontal direction. Rotate. And of course I could scale it as well. It's too, far too big. Not awfully concerned about it being too big at the moment, uh, but it was also too too short. Now I'll maybe leave it there for now then I'll zoom in and, and see if I need to fix it. Try to get the scale representation right. Let's move it away. Now the lines that I've got here are very very large. They're not necessarily what I want uh, but we can see in terms of the thickness uh, it's representing around about 100 millimeters per board, and that's that's pretty good. If I wanted to make it a bit bigger, I could. Maybe I'm saying that they're 130, 140, 150 types of boards. Okay, and just to make this very simple, what we're going to do is to 
hide this underneath our decking. We'll rasterize it. And I just want it to basically be a repeated pattern. So I'll lay a new layer by copy. Glue that together. I don't even need to do three. I've already got enough. Delete this one. And I'll join these together. Select layer merge. And now all I'm going to do, but just like I did before, but it'll be easier now that it's all simply red, is to select, I could do this in two ways. I could select all of the red elements, select similar, or I could select outside of it, which means it's going to select everything but, and then I can, on the, my planks, I'll bring them to the forefront so it makes sense now, I'll press delete. And now because I'm pressing delete, it's going to leave me with what's left over. Now what do I do? not want. I don't want my red decking anymore so I can turn the red decking off and what are we left with? We're left with the actual texture of what we're wanting. Let's do that one more time. We'll do that with the weatherboard this time. Let's go back to our elevation. We're going to magic wand the gray color. Select similar. Select it at all. We'll go layer, new, we'll just copy it this time, layer by copy, and we'll rename this as weatherboard. Let's find something that we want to use as weatherboard. Now we could just use something like this. If I go to my siding, this is probably what we want. We want it to be quite light, so we might use one like this. And I might then copy it to create a one that's even lighter, one that's more white or, or more of the gray that we see. But what we're wanting this for is for its shadow, the shadow that it creates. I might use a copy of this one. And then we'll make it lighter. All right. So we're going to drag a copy into here. We see, obviously, it's far too big. What do I need to do? I need to copy that pattern many times over. We need to make it smaller. We need the boards to ideally be the same size as our original image in this instance. So let's do that. Move down here so we can see it and let's line that up and scale it. Edit transform scale. Great. Now I could stretch it horizontally again if I wanted to. Now normally I would never do something like this in Photoshop, normally I would be doing this in Archicad, created as a texture. I'm just wanting to show you that it can be done here as well. Lay a new layer by copy. And what we're wanting to see is that they do actually merge perfectly, and I might bring these all the way to the front for now, just so it's not hiding. Layers, merge layers, lay a new layer by copy. Lay a new layer by copy. Hold shift. And we're going to join all these together. Layers merge. And then we'll copy them the other way. I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut now. Command J, Control J. We don't want to have any gaps between it, so I want to make sure that I don't do that. Now, sometimes it looks like that in a zoomed out, but when you zoom in, there actually is none. And when you merge them together, that often disappears as well. One more time. One more time. So now we've got enough of these that we can cover the whole building with it. Now, 
that's a very slow process. We can do that much faster if we want to. But I just wanted to show you it. Merge layers. All right, we'll place this over the building. I will temporarily reduce its opacity just so I can get those lines lined up. That's it. Now, what do we do? We'll put it back down over the weatherboard or under the weatherboard in this instance. Go into magic wand on the outside that's not weatherboard. Click on the right layer, please. Then I will go to my weatherboard, my new weatherboard, which is the dark siding, and delete. Bring that to the front. There it is. Now I can change the color if I don't want it to be so dark. Why, did we, why were we using this? Because it's got more of a, um, an image feel. Uh, and we're going to now make this lighter. So to make this lighter, I'm going to go to my color balance or my hue saturation. And I will just reduce its darkness. Just which brings us back to more of that mid-gray. So that's some editing. Uh, one final one. Let's do the same thing for the, and I could, of course, maybe go contrast and add a bit more contrast because it's sort of now a bit muted. So that'll make it stand out a bit more. Yep. Uh, let's do that with the glass. So we're seeing glass, which is really blue. It's not really real. So we'll go back to our elevation. Lex, this time, we'll just do it in one go. Um, so we'll get a background image. In this case, I'll just do a sky. I'll do this one here. It's a very different color to the other sky. So what we might do once we rasterize this is just go color balance and we will lighten it up. I want it to be a bit darker, but I just wanted it to be more blue. More cyan. So we'll, this is the one that we'll use. Uh, we'll put this under our elevation for now, just again, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to magic wand on the elevation layer on the glass and do the same thing, select similar. So that's all selected. Now I'm going to go to my sky and this time I'll copy it. So I'll go layer, new layer via copy or layer via cut. And now this is my sky, I can delete that one, bring that one in front of, and now we've got sky, or this blue, replacing our glass. So it looks a little bit more realistic. And of course, if I didn't want it to be so dominant, I could reduce its opacity, or I could make it lighter, or I could make it darker, I could do a few things. And then if I wanted to make it look a little bit streaky, sometimes I do something like this. I could, um, I, I like using the dodge tool for this, make exposure quite low, and make its hardness quite high. Yeah, let's try that. And we'll just make its size just a little bit smaller. And then maybe we can do some swipes along the face of the glass just to show some um, maybe reflection or streakiness. And that makes the glass look a little bit more believable because it's a little bit less consistent. And of course, maybe if the glass is um, in shade, such as the front door, then that should be a little bit less vibrant. So we could cast a shadow. What else we don't have in this particular one, casting a shadow. Uh, of course, I could do that as well. And I've done that in other other video tutorials I've done. So hopefully this is making sense with what I'm talking about. Hopefully you've seen something like this before with some of the other videos I've created. Anyway, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully uh, this is helping you to understand how to create a visualization, a presentation um, with some fairly simple tools.